Podcasting from Singapore and broadcasting all around the world. You're listening to the Ignite EdTech Podcast with Craig Kemp, created by an educator for educators and streaming to the world. Now, over to your host, Craig Kemp. Hello and welcome to episode 116 of the Ignite EdTech Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Kemp, and it's an honor to have you back with us. I continue to work with the incredibly talented Mark Quinn to improve the final audio quality of this podcast. He has his own podcast production studio that provides editing and mastering services to content creators. To connect with Mark, please see the details in the podcast notes below. Today is the first episode of 2023 and I'm thrilled to bring the podcast back for another year. I had the chance to rest, reflect and re-energize over the break. And whilst the majority of my time is spent now with EduSpark, I still feel I have a lot to give and a lot to connect with you around EdTech and innovation. I can't wait for the year ahead and I'm excited to bring you even more amazing conversations with EdTech experts and global leaders in their field straight to your ears this year. Stay tuned, subscribe and share so we can keep this going. A tool that has positively impacted the authentic and purposeful use of technology into classrooms and meeting rooms that I have worked in is Along. Along is a two-way digital communication platform focused on reflection and feedback through text, video, and audio. Teachers sign up using a Google or Microsoft 365 educator account and then browse the site's tutorials and resources. There's info about getting started, how to find time in the day for reflection, the research behind the site, and even a customizable Google Slides presentation to introduce the platform to students. Once teachers feel ready to interact with students, they can email students a sign-up link using their Google or Microsoft account. Teachers then create a reflection question of their own or draw from the questions and related resources on the site. They can also create a sample response to share as a model. Students will be able to see the question and respond via text, video or audio. Student reflections appear on the teacher dashboard where teachers can respond. Ultimately, success will depend on teachers giving students opportunities to let their true personalities shine without feeling exposed. Creative teachers might also slip in some questions that assess learning, but you'll need to be careful to do so without sacrificing the relationship building. Poor implementation of this tool could result in yet another platform for quizzing or understanding checks. I highly recommend that you take a look at the link in the description below, along.org. This week, I wanted to give you an overview of the year ahead through my eyes and the trends and opportunities that I see for education in 2023. As I highlighted in the last episode in December, I have some pretty clear thoughts on edtech trends that we're going to see in 2023 and how to utilize them to be successful. For a long time, education has involved us spending a good chunk of our early years sitting in a classroom absorbing information before heading out to put it to use. But the pace of change today means that what we learn one day will be redundant the next. This means that the way we learn has to change. Embracing technology and concepts ensures that we are better equipped for the fast-changing world of today. So here's my rundown of the top edtech trends that are going to drive this change over the next 12 months and beyond. Artificial intelligence, or AI. Obviously, this has to come first on my list, based purely on what we're seeing with ChatGPT over the last months. Artificial intelligence, described as the most transformative technology of the 21st century, is reshaping every industry and field of human activity, including education. In the classroom, it's found in the form of a virtual assistant that can help both students and teachers to manage their time and complete assignments. Tutoring systems that can provide personalized learning experiences for students of all ages and abilities. Powering remote and online learning systems where it can adapt the pace of teaching to match a student's needs. Language translation in educational settings where pupils speak a variety of languages. And many other applications from most of the tools you probably use in your classrooms with students today. It's even been reported that some schools in China have implemented facial recognition technology using computer vision systems to monitor whether or not students are paying attention in class. Absolutely incredible. According to UNESCO, AI has the potential to help tackle some of the toughest challenges in education today, including addressing inequalities in the way schooling is provided around the world and improving access to knowledge globally. However, 
it also creates challenges of its own. With effort required to ensure that the rollout of this highly disruptive technology is done in a way that's fair and doesn't itself contribute to those inequalities. Of course, ChatGPT has dominated educational news over the last few months, inciting fundamental questions about how we teach and assess student learning. Educators around the world started 2023 with a frenetic scramble to rewrite lesson plans and ditch traditional writing assignments. ChatGPT, and by extension AI as a whole, is clearly the dominant theme in edtech for the foreseeable future. But the disruptive ramifications of ChatGPT have eclipsed the many ways in which AI is supporting personalised and adaptive learning for the better. This is critical to note because AI does not have to mark the early days of an education apocalypse. The technology is here to stay, and so we must find ways to use it well. AI is not just being used to advance traditional learning outcomes like public speaking, but also shaping how educators address student mental health. EdTech solutions are increasingly using AI to assist students through bespoke stress reduction techniques and remove social stigmas of asking for mental health assistance. Sometimes, it's just easier to ask an anonymous bot for help. I've seen a lot of amazing stuff happening with an app out of Estonia called ClanBeat. You should definitely check them out. Other platforms are using AI-powered social chatbots to help university students overcome the dividends of new social groups. These are indicative of a general trend towards tools that support student well-being and emotional intelligence. These tools help learners to develop skills such as empathy, communication, and problem solving, recognizing that learning is a holistic process which extends beyond traditional subjects like maths, English, or geography. EduSpark co-founder Andrew Mowat is even using an incredible tool called Synthesia to test the delivery of courses in additional languages via an AI assistive tool. Incredible things are happening in this space. Stay tuned and reach out with your ideas. Tag us in on social media too, because right now with EduSpark, we're living and breathing AI, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. My second field is virtual and augmented reality, VR and AR, the two forms of extended reality, or XR, that are becoming increasingly important within education systems. VR allows us to step into a virtual world, and there's a vast and growing number of experiences that let us do everything from stepping back in time and experiencing history through our own eyes, to training for difficult and dangerous tasks, such as conducting repairs in hazardous environments. Other use cases will grow in popularity during the year, including virtual classrooms, which allow remote learning and class activities to be delivered in a more immersive and experiential setting. And we're already seeing some of this in the metaverse. Augmented reality still requires a device, a phone, a tablet, or a headset, but it's different from VR as it normally involves superimposing computer-generated images onto what the user is actually seeing. The advantage here is that it can provide real-time information. For example, warning a student in a woodwork class environment that a piece of machinery might be dangerous. This is possible thanks to computer vision algorithms that analyze the images captured by cameras. In schools, AR textbooks are becoming available that contain images and models that come to life when looked at through a smartphone camera enabling students to get a closer, more in-depth look at anything from ancient Roman architecture to the inner workings of the human body. Companies like Hologo are doing incredible things in this space, and you should definitely engage with them. I've put the link in the podcast notes below. Museums and sites of historical or scientific interest are increasingly adding AR to their environment and exhibits to create more immersive education opportunities. VR and AR are bringing immersive experiences to students every day. Don't just watch the space. It's time to immerse yourself in it. And to finish up quickly, hybrid learning is going to continue to be the way to go forward where we learn and grow together. And at EduSpark, we continue to push boundaries into this hybrid space with our partner schools. And this is getting more and more exciting with the inclusion of AI and other tools to make this transition easier. Again, I'd love to dive further into this conversation with you off air. So don't hesitate to email me on craig at eduspark.world. This is definitely not an exhaustive list of the forces shaping EdTech in 2023, but it does capture my key thoughts and trends which represent a growing maturity in how we as educators use technology to support learning. But this can only be done effectively through well-informed decision-making. We're at a time of transition in education 
where the systems of the past are becoming increasingly irrelevant to the possibilities of the future. Digital technology will play a profound role in shaping this future, and consultants like myself are working hard to make sure this shift results in a global education system which is inclusive, experiential, transformative, and dialogue-driven. I'm so excited about 2023 and what we'll be doing as a connected group of educators globally. To learn more, please connect and follow on your social channel of choice and don't hesitate to reach out with your thoughts and ideas. Every week, I bring you a short interview with some of my edu heroes, an engaging learning experience with someone who makes a difference in education every day, with a particular focus or angle towards educational technology. This week, I had the pleasure of chatting with Michaela Epstein. Let's have a listen to the chat. Today, I have the honor of speaking with Michaela Epstein. Michaela is an experienced educator and passionate about mathematics. She's based in Australia. Michaela is inspirational in making mathematics fun, challenging, and satisfying, and helps schools and students be successful in their learning with mathematics. After searching for the best ways to make PD and maths more meaningful, Michaela founded Maths Teacher Circles. Maths Teacher Circles bring primary and secondary teachers together to actively do maths and talk teaching on a regular basis. This impacts thousands of educators globally each year. And we've partnered with EduSpark with Math Teacher Circles to share the energy with our global community. Michaela, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Are you ready to talk about education and technology integration? Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, Craig. It's an absolute pleasure. Let's go. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your current role and what inspires you to do what you do? Sure. So I'm founder and director of Maths Teacher Circles in Australia. We've been running since January 2020. And for those of you thinking carefully about that time period, you realise that it wasn't such a great time to start anything face-to-face. So uh, Maths Teacher Circles is now mainly a model of online professional learning that brings primary and secondary teachers from all over the globe together. Um, And it's really one of the silver linings of um, ups and downs of the last few years that we've been able to go online and um, have a thriving global community. I've got a a teaching background, secondary teaching, and for a long time um, I tried and, you know, I spent a lot of time looking for ways to make maths meaningful and engaging for my students, that kind of magic combination of helping them to want to come to class, but to also learn rigorous mathematics in the process. Um, And through that, I was inspired to step into a professional learning space where teachers could come together regularly to really share their expertise. I'm a big believer in people not reinventing the wheel, but being able to come together in spaces where they can leverage um, the interests, the insights, and the backgrounds of those they're connecting with. I I love it. And we've had multiple conversations, Michaela, prior to this and, you know, throughout the process of learning about what you do and talking about EduSpark. And it's not just the passion and enthusiasm that drew me to want to chat to you, but it's the expertise and the real desire to make change. You know, myself, I love maths and always have. And I have always wanted my kids to love maths as well and know how to use numbers for you why mathematics and why maths teacher circles? Yeah, great question, Craig. So I need to go back in history a little bit to explain my love of maths. I had a grandmother who passed on a lot of that love to me. And for whatever reason, as she was growing up, she decided that it was a subject that she was going to pursue at school against the advice of everyone around her. It wasn't a thing for girls to do. And so she really connected with that subject with mathematics and in turn passed on that love to me. So some of my strongest memories growing up are of doing puzzles and playing games with her. And to me, that's what mathematics was. It was fun and, you know, a bit challenging, sometimes competitive, but, you know, fun and thought provoking. So that's always been at the back of my mind as I've uh, stepped into teaching and education. Still, even more recently, in forming maths teacher circles, I I want teachers to continue to be able to connect with their own love of the subject and do so that 
leaves them inspired to go back to the classroom with new ideas for their students uh, so that that love and that deep curiosity about maths is something that is continually passed on to others. Yeah, it's, it's really obvious the why behind building this out. I think it's really exciting to see that Maths Teacher Circles is incredibly inspirational for teachers. What was the point that you realised that you cracked the code, that you were doing something innovative with Maths Teacher Circles? So I mentioned that we started in January 2020 and we actually started with a two-day face-to-face workshop um, held at the University of Melbourne. We had teachers from not only all over Victoria but from across Australia and these teachers travelled to Melbourne in their school holidays to come together. That in itself, even before we started, it told me, hey, there's something interesting going on here. We have teachers who are so committed and really they don't just want to learn, but they want to connect with like-minded teachers. So that really lies at the heart of what Maths Teacher Circles is about. And, you know, it's something that as we've continued to grow and develop, we've made sure continues to play a central part. Yeah, that's amazing. It's a cool story and it's it's cool to see the the ground up sort of roots of what you've built, which has really been built by passion. What's your best advice for teachers listening today to integrate mathematics authentically and purposefully into their classroom? That's a topic for, you know, many days of conversation in some sense, but, you know, I think there's still some important um, bite-sized ideas that teachers can pursue right away. I suppose there's one key thing that, that I'll share here, and that's what we often talk about at Maths Teacher Circle sessions, and that's actually spending time to do maths yourself. Now, I know that 99.95% of teachers are short on time, but there are some huge benefits of actually spending even a, a short period on a regular basis to do maths yourself. Firstly, you re-engage with the subject and you kind of con- uh, continually build your craft and your content knowledge. But also, you start to build a deeper empathy for your students and reconnect with the position of a learner. So when you do challenging maths problems yourself, you suddenly remember, oh, that's what it's like to have success in that light bulb moment. Or that's the feeling of challenge and frustration that my students are feeling. By going through that experience, it puts you in a much stronger position when you're then with your students in the classroom to identify what might be appropriate prompts, what's even um, good language to use to motivate and to set goals. So if you take a moment to actually do the maths that you're going to be presenting to your student, it will minimise the amount of prep, surprisingly, by quite a lot because you get a far deeper um, insight into what the tasks are going to be like and how they might pan out for your students. I love that. And I love that specifically because my daughter is eight. Uh, I've got an eight-year-old and a four-year-old. My daughter, who is eight, is really into maths. And she's not a spectacular mathematician, but she loves it. And she loves numbers. And she's just started this week creating word problems they're talking about word problems and they're looking at addition and subtraction strategies and you know coming from a a background of loving maths and teaching maths and and being involved in that i you know as part of her homework she was building some strategies or questions for me to answer and as you're talking about as a teacher to go through and do maths and look at numbers and do things yourself I love when she was just asking me questions about, you know, mathematics. What And she kept saying things to me like, tell me another strategy. What other strategy could you use? It's like the teacher uh, coming out of her. But <laughs> That's a great prompt, prompt for her. Yeah. It's so cool. And when you think about that, uh, I, I often think that teachers give homework for the sake of giving homework. I guess my question is, what benefit does homework have to add value to the learning that's happening in the classroom? I think that um, one of the huge benefits of homework is just 
the the time it gives students. The greatest mathematicians in the world, um, even you know anyone who's um, calls themselves a mathematician, they know that solving problems and thinking mathematically takes time. There's a famous mathematician, Andrew Wiles, who um, solved Fermat's last theorem, and he took years and years to solve that problem. Now, I believe that it's not just the realm of mathematicians to take time to think. That also is something that's beneficial for young learners. And that's where homework can play a valuable role, to give students the opportunity to just consolidate and reflect and get perspective on the things that they've done in class and maybe to play around with those ideas some more and to figure out what made sense for them and where they still actually have questions about their learning. Yeah, really cool. I really love that. And it's something that I would encourage all people listening to think about what that looks like in their classroom or their school as well. Michaela, let's jump into some quick fire questions. The first thing that comes to your head and maybe a brief why. What's your favourite EdTech book or resource? The Mathagon Polypad. It has an enormous range of virtual manipulatives that allow students to play with mathematical ideas and to think and connect and to reason about mathematics. I love it. What's your personal go-to EdTech tool that the listeners need to try? I really like Jamboard. It's one that we use quite a bit at maths teacher circle sessions and because you can segregate people into like separate spaces to do you know group brainstorming or something but then you can also see what other people are doing on the other Jamboard spaces. So kind of it's a clever and pretty simple tool, but it actually allows for fantastic um, group collaboration and brainstorming. I love it. Uh, I also love Jamboard. I think there's so much potential and it's underutilized, I think, in our schools. Michaela, the, all of the links of this stuff will go in the podcast notes as well. So everything you're talking about, we'll make sure that the links are there for people listening now so they can follow straight through with it. What's one daily habit or practice that helps you enjoy progress and succeed in your career? Uh, I'm a list maker. <laughs> um, I get great joy from creating up my to-do list first thing in the day and prioritizing it so that I get the gnarliest thinking and creative tasks done first. I set myself maybe one or two of them a day and then have um, some really short, easy to tick off tasks. Knowing that I'm not always going to get everything done and that's totally fine, but having that list allows me to focus and not spend time on things that aren't the highest priority. I've loved everything you've shared with us today, Michaela. It's really inspirational, your journey from you know, classroom to business and ed tech and uh, really developing how math teachers can develop their practice and, and support themselves and their students and their growth and development is really inspirational. I know people listening are going to want to follow and connect with you. What's the best way for them to do that? Uh, so you can head over to our website, mathsteachercircles.org forward slash ignite. Um, and we're also on Facebook and Twitter. So if you just search for Maths Teacher Circles, you can find us there and we'll put the, I'll send you, Craig, the links so you can put them in the show notes as well. Awesome. Michaela, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much for having me, Craig. It's been fun. Next week, join me for episode 117 of the Ignite EdTech podcast, when I am joined by coding and robotics entrepreneur, Sandy Enoch. If you enjoyed today's episode, please follow us and share the podcast with your PLN and colleagues. Please remember to spend a few minutes to rate this podcast too on your podcast channel of choice so we can reach even more educators and edtech enthusiasts globally. Remember, you have the chance to win as well. Check out the links in the description for more, and I'll see you again next week. If you liked today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode. And be in the drawing to win prizes every week. If you know others that would enjoy the show, please hit that share button and brighten their day. Join us again next week for your weekly EdTech hit with at Mr. Kemp NZ. We'll see you again soon.